Good evening guys, it's uh, Steve here again. Um, I've been playing around with my workshop um, discovering uh, the art of making jigs. I've had a lot of fun and uh, it's, uh, I thought I'd just sort of share the jig that I found from uh, one of the woodworking uh, channels. Um, and I guess maybe you might have seen it or found it or whatever, but uh, I find it's, uh, it's, it's, gra it's a great jig and I've never I've never uh, been able to figure out this before, but uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great uh, uh, YouTube. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm always tongue tied. What's this damn thing in my way? It looks looks like a couple of uh, Kanakas hanging out there with a bloody cow or something. <laughs> okay, so what I did, I made up a jig to make tapered legs. So it's really cool. It's like 45 by 45 at this end, and this end's around about 20 by 20. Um, all the four sides are all equal. It's got a little bit of a, a flat section down for about 150 mil, for which I sort of designed, uh, designed it for. So this is only just a piece of uh, cheap pine as a sample, just to test out my unit, but it's, it's turned out great. <laughs> it was really easy to do. So I'll sort of share what I did. Um, and we'll see how we go from there. Okay. Well, here's the setup. I initially had it as a setup uh, here, which allowed me to uh, do certain angles. Like I, I could have cut this on an angle like here, but the trouble is when you go around to the, it's all great if you want to cut two sides on an angle, but if you want to cut four sides an angle, then it sort of messes it up. Whereas, this is great for cutting sort of flat angles or you know things like things like this one is perfect where it's just you know it's the same dimension the thickness through but it's sort of wider and thinner at the end so this was great i did this using this part of it which i can sort of show you but it's pretty self-explanatory so this is just a bit of custom wood Got some non-skids, uh, non-skid pads here, which are just I think they use them on decking or steps to stop uh, things slipping. That actually helps for the extra grip. And I'll go through, and, and I'll sort of utilised already what I had, but there's probably ways to improve. But you know, probably not all that much at the same time. So I'll take the camera down so I can get it a little bit closer, and I'll flip the camera around. Here we go, successful, it's night time to go. Okay, so what happens is, I find the center hole in the end here and drill a, a six millimeter hole. That six millimeter hole references to this, which, which I've created here at the end. So what you do is you just, whoops, slip this around here, slip this around there, this, references into the hole as such so now this has got this part looked after so what it, so what you do is when you come back up to here i'll take this off here this is a good way of doing this this now is a way of locking this in so this is locked in so that when i push the table leg up against here and if i do the four sides it's always going to stay the same so as you see it spins around it's always going to stay the same. Now, obviously, it's spinning around up here because it's already been pre-cut, but it doesn't spin around. You have, to t you have to pull it back. You have to pull it back, realign it again until such time as the, the angles start to uh, work out that you can just spin it. But then, beside that, you use this as a stop lock, and I use this with a lock nut here. So if I undo the lock nut, the lock nut is a way of keeping it fixed. So what I've got is I've got a, I'll go right back up here, which will take a little bit of time. This comes off. So I made this block here with a referencing point. So this referencing point can slide back and forward in that track or this track, but it, I've, I've actually done it for this track here because you really only need to lock it down here and it pivots down there. So by doing that, just pop the track over here. Generally, uh, you know, table legs like this will probably be 50 millimeters, I suppose, max, going down to 
Uh, well, I've got 20 mil. I think that's as probably as thin as you'd want to do it. So we'll quickly pop this up. Okay. So what I do is I put the timber on here. I find the point. So I mark down from here down to about, I've done down to 150 millimetres. And that's the point which I want to sit right there. So that's the point where it, it, it starts off cutting. As you see, it cuts down the line and stays parallel, it stays parallel down that line. So it's just a matter of you then push this over till that hits your, your timber where you're quite happy with it to be. You lock it down. Whoopsie. You lock it down like so. Okay, it's nice and firm. That's not going anywhere. Now, that's my reference point. So, as I turn it, that's my reference point every time. So, it's exactly the same every time. So, now what I'll do is pop that on top. Now, I've set this up for this particular clamp. It's a Carbotec clamp. Of course, you can get sort of all different versions of clamps like that. You can even make your own if you want. But I quite f I find this one's quite... Uh, quite good yeah no i have no problems with it so that's locked down nice and tight these little rubber things on the end help to uh, grip it this is locked down here i've made my reference to my fit set my fence to 450 millimeters so i set my fit fence over here to 450 millimeters from the blade so that's already pre-done so now it's just a matter of you one runs this down the blade pushes it carries down the blade using this reference on the edge and then when you've done your first cut, you undo this end, you turn it over, you lock it down, push it up against your reference point, lock it down, and do your next cut, and so, so, and so forth. Now I've got this one here as a bit of an extra, which I just kind of like lightly clamp, it keeps that a little bit stable there. Not that it probably needs it, it seems to be doing it fine. So that's, that's, um, that's how this works out. Now, what I did was I utilised an existing carriage for which I've already got, as I told you, which uses this as well. So I didn't want too many jigs. I don't have that much room. So down on this end here, I, if you unscrew this, this here, this can reference back and forth. So I can reference this back here. So depending on how big I want to do the end... Well, and subsequently this, this bolt here, which has got a sort of double bolt arrangement, this bolt here can slide up and down to find the, the centre. So you can make this up to your own sort of uh, requirements. And this just allows me that little bit of extra um, moving in. And I could have just fixed it to the back, screwed it to the back, but you know what? I even made it that, so it's a little bit adjustable. So I get a little bit of infinite adjustability now I cut my slots, which might be just, I cut the slots just using my um, domino. That was great for that because it was just simple. I just put on the wider setting and just kept moving it along and sort of setting up, getting out the router and setting it all up. So this is a little jig. It's a ripper. I'm looking forward to doing some proper legs. I'm going to play around with uh, how I do the legs and how I will laminate some uh, featured timbers and how it may look, so I'm going to play around with that. That'll be my next project. But um, all in all, if you want to make a tapered leg, here's a great little jig to do it with. And of course, you can modify it. So just basically showing you the prince of it all, principle of it all. It's no point in giving you measurements and all that because you can sort of adjust it to however you want. Now, the other option was to do another slot here and do the same system up here. But this was fine because it's a secondary clamp as well. And this can this just literally comes out because it's it's also locked down as well. So what I can do, I can undo this. This is how easy, and this is what I like about being a dual purpose one that comes off. This comes out, so we'll slide that over here. That pops out. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> just like you want it to do when you're filming. Okay, bit of seasickness. Okay, get this one off. That comes off there. I just all I did was just do a single hole here because I know that it's I know what I want to cut from my legs out of it, so I just sort of set this up. But I suppose in retrospect I would have um, 
done a slot, which would have been probably better. But nonetheless, this works out fine. Um, we pop this out. Oops, that one can go down to the ground again, like the other one. And then we crop this last one. And this is like watching grass grow, as you can well imagine. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can, but I want to show you the next setup. So we'll unscrew this. Great camera skills there. I hope you're not getting seasick. <laughs> I'm getting a tired arm trying to hold the camera. This is, I suppose I'll have to learn the art of film editing and dual cameras, but you know, I do this for free. So there's no point in spending any money on that sort of stuff. Okie dokie. Right, now it's done. Now it's set up for using this one. So it's a matter of just sliding this back and you can kind of angle it. So you get some angles going there. And this is designed to sit over the end here. And you get your piece of timber up here. Pop your timber in there. Align it up to where you want to have cut. Lock it down. Lock it down. And then these these have got um, a, a, a groove underneath which allows me to lock it down using those clamps there and there from underneath um, i'm sure you guys now understand how that goes so now i put my piece of wood on and if i want to cut that off see say like there i just lock push this over push this over a bit more and so you can see that's going to, this part's going to be cut off. Lock this down, making sure it's not going to get cut in half. Um, so therefore that, that works just for cutting sort of some great angles. Um, you don't have to necessarily cut a leg. I mean, I might want to, for instance, safely cut something like this now. Oh, and I'll see if I can get this working. Yep, I might just want to cut off this see so whatever's on this line gets cut off i can lock it down lock it down set these up under set them up to there lock it down everything's nice and secure and then when i cut it down and if i've got a pile of these already pre-cut they're all going to be exactly the same so there was a little bit of a uh, tip tonight on some jigs you might be familiar with some of those jigs um, and that's great but I just thought I'd sort of share those with you and uh, I have made a spleen jig which uh, I'm sure you guys have probably seen a spleen jig but just let me know if you want to see it and I'll show that to you as well because I got some good great results from that but I can show you some improvements from what I did after I'd made it <laughs> okay guys well it's great to uh I hope to hope to see you again. Not that I get to see you at all. <laughs> hope you enjoy it. Okay, cheers.